Hi there, Andreas here with Express Pets Finger Drumming, and today I'd like to explain the Archi MPD226 software editor, which you can download from the Archi website. And when you open it, it will look like this, and you can see that it resembles the hardware device, meaning that you have a pet section on the left hand side, and you have the control section on the right hand side. And on the top, you have a couple of parameters that you can change depending on which pad or control you select. And you also notice that only this area over here changes when I click on a pad or on a control. But this one over here is for the global settings and this won't change, unless you do changes, right? Um, so first of all, you see that you have four different pad banks, A, B, C, and D, and you have three different control banks. And those are later on recallable independently from one another. And those are saved with each and every preset. So one preset contains four pad banks and three control banks. And when we go to the pads first, you will notice that you have different types that you can select. So it's the pad type can be note or program or program bank. And depending on which setting you make here, all the other parameters will change. And usually when I use the MPD-226 for finger drumming, I of course want to have the pad to be the type note. And then I can go ahead and do the other changes that I need to do. And usually I then leave the MIDI channel to common. And the notes, of course, I have to select. And then the aftertouch I leave at off because uh, this doesn't occupy too much uh, bandwidth on the MIDI channel and makes it faster this way. Then the trigger mode needs to be momentary. That means that you fire off one shot samples while well, you could also use it for toggle mode, meaning that you hit a pad once, the sound starts sustaining and when you hit it the second time, then the sounds stop sustaining. Furthermore, you have that MIDI to DIN option here and this is currently set to off. It means that when it's off, no MIDI data will be sent to the MIDI jack that is on the device. And that's the way I work. So I usually just work with a USB cable and then I don't need this. And here in this section, you can change the colors of uh, the pad when it's on and when it's off. So in this case, you could just say you want to have no color when the pad is on and you can do the same for uh, the off color, but you can also play with these colors here. So you can do the on color green, off color light blue, and you can see over here it's indicated how the colors will look like later on. Um, then if we go to the control section, you can see you have also the option to select a type for this control. Uh, most often you will probably use the continuous control value and it's also preset here. You can use aftertouch or you can, some, you can use some increment decrement uh, values here. When you use the continuous controller mode, then you again can change the MIDI channel, can change the MIDI CC number, define what the minimum value will be and the maximum value. And here again, you can choose whether it should be sent to the MIDI jack or not. Down here, you have uh, a few buttons which are very, very handy because these buttons can be assigned to keystrokes. And that's really helpful because the keystrokes that you can select are actually uh, related to your computer keyboard. And that means that you can actually uh, get along completely without a computer keyboard in a performance uh, because these numbers then will send keystrokes to the application that you're working with. And um, you can also in this second key field here define which additional keystrokes should be sent. For example, control Alt and 9, for example. If this is something meaningful, as you know, you can change it to be anything you like, but um, this way you can imagine you have a lot of uh, freedom in controlling your DAW or any other kind of software that you're controlling with this. Then next uh, you have the 
file menu. Um, this one contains the standard uh, things like new, open preset, close windows, window, close window, save, save as, load from hardware and send to hardware. Uh, quite some important ones because this is how you later on uh, send your current parameter settings that you have selected to the hardware and in this step you only need to select a preset slot that you want to send it to and then hit send. Then let's go to the tools menu and there you will find one uh, feature which I really like a lot that's the auto populate tool and this one lets you uh, change multiple parameters at once and that means you could for example for the pads change the aftertouch and make it all off so you erase it from each and every pad and you can then even select the banks you want to send it to and when you apply this it means that you erase the aftertouch for all 64 pads at once and that's a huge time saver and as you can see you can't only do it for the pads you can also do it for the knobs faders switches and then really change in depth the features that you want to see or that you don't want to see and then hit apply and it will all be sent to your device another feature that i like a lot is the send multiple presets feature and this one lets you send multiple presets to your hardware at once so when you, for example, exchange presets with friends or use the ExpressPads finger drumming presets that you can download from the website for the MPD-226, then you can just load them there by clicking the Browse button, uh, load the other presets there, and then send it to the device, and it works. So I've checked it, it works perfectly. That's, again, a huge time saver. Then finally, you have the Global Settings Editor. And here you can change things like the global uh, MIDI channel, the way the notes are displayed, either as values or as numbers. Then the LCD contrast, 50 is the uh, default value and it works pretty well. Then the tap average time. Then you have the tempo LED. I like to leave it off because if it blinks all the time that can really get on your nerves. Then you have the transport to DIN, which can be globally set off or on. And these three things here are really important because those are the pad gain uh, values or parameters that you can change. And pad gain means um, that you can set a certain amount of amplification to your hits. I personally don't need that, so I leave it at zero. Then you have the pad threshold, which I also leave at a very low level, which means that the pads are very sensitive and that's a, yeah, a setting that I, that I like for finger drumming. And then you have a pad curve, which is uh, by default set to linear. And I also leave this at linear usually because this gives me the right amount of dynamic when I play. But you could also use an S-curve, uh, two logarithmic curves and two exponential curves. And the logarithmic curves uh, tend to amplify your hits a bit more and the exponential curve uh, actually uh, dampens your hits, which means that you have to hit the pads harder in order for a loud sound to occur. Well, finally, you have the MIDI clock setting here. You can set it to internal or to external. If you set it to external, the device will receive uh, the time information from your host you have connected it to and this way you can just change the parameters to your liking and to your workflow. Yeah, that's about it. The only two things left here are the window menu which contains the minimize window function and the bring all to front and the help menu which contains the user guide that you can open here and yeah, that's really about it. I think it's a great software editor, one of um, the best that I've seen so far. So that's, that's by the way, the case with all the MPD2 uh, products. Um, they are all more or less uh, structured in the same way, which of course makes sense. But um, it's really well thought through the tools here, which save you a lot of time. That's, that's really a great idea to add this to such an editor. It makes exchanging presets easy and it makes yeah, setting parameters for your hardware very easy. So I like it a lot. 
So I hope you have a lot of fun with your device. And lastly, if you liked that video, please give it a like. And if you want to stay informed with finger drumming, hardware reviews, software reviews, all about the topic of finger drumming, and please subscribe to this channel and we'll see you again. Thank you. Bye.